my 25 years as a professional guitarist and producer, alongside composing music and performing concerts, I've always had a passion for exploring and fine-tuning new gear to enhance my sound and find inspiration. So what about the Mercury X for Maris? Is it really the best reverb pedal ever made? And is it just a reverb? To find out, we'll put it to test on a production with guitars, piano and drums. We're gonna check out the different structures and sounds. We're gonna show the possibilities. And I will give you my honest review and the pros and cons. And make sure to stick to the end where I'm showing you my favorite features and sounds. So let's dive in.
Stereo ins and outs, you have instruments, line levels selectable, you have expression, uh, you have MIDI ins and outs, and you have a USB port. You have a built-in tuner, uh, this hold modifier, you can use this as a freeze function to collapse the reverb and build up, and actually you can assign it to do anything. You can also choose if it's momentary or latching. Let's start off with a blank preset. Now it's bypassed. This is the 78 hall structure. Inspired by the Lexicon 224. So instead of just a decay, we're having decay for each frequency, divided into bass, mids and treble. So if we turn up the bass, we really get that rumble. In the mids, we can also control the crossover frequency. Let's add a longer treble. The modulation goes from low, medium, to high. For most settings, I would recommend the low. Diffusion can be set to low. Now you can hear it's more scattered sound. So before we deep dive into more tweaking, let's hear the different structures. This is the ultra plate coming from the Mercury 7. Cathedral. This is a brand new spring reverb. So of course a much shorter decay than the wall, but adds a nice dimension to the sound. This is bypassed. This is a 78 plate. And here it says decay, but also size. So let's just go crazy. 68 meters and 100% size.
So let's go back to Cathedral. Let's lower the modulation speed. Here we can add a filter. So let's take a parametric. Choosing low pass. We can add a pitch shift. Here we can choose where the pitch shift is set. So this is pre and dry before the tank or post. So maybe let's do just pre. And here we set a mix. So So let's take it one octave above. We can add modulation, vibrato, and this is a wall and we can see here we can change from EO uh, tremolo Now the mix is 100%, so now it's just a tremolo, so... And if we add this... Pre-tank... We're adding tremolo to the reverb. Pre. The modifiers is an endless chapter and we want to be able to go through everything right now. But let's switch to number five because this whole modifier can be assigned to do almost anything. That's because we set the dynamic freeze back here in the dynamics, it says freeze. Okay, so now I've been setting up the prism structure. But a pre-delay. I can set the divisions to third eighths and a quarter note. Here you can change the delay to digital, bucket brigade, and magnetic. And normally reverb pre-delay is set that the pre-delay like 20th, 40, 100 milliseconds before the reverb starts. But this is able to go up all the way to two and a half seconds. And now under the modifiers, we can see I've been setting the hold assign to tap. So, is this really the best reverb pedal out there? Well, when it comes to sound, it always hard because everyone has their own taste, luckily. But with this pedal, I think it's it's something for everyone. I think the user interface 
with all the possibilities and same time simplicity, I can't think of anyone having this nailed down like the Mercury X. At the same time, the quality of each algorithm is just amazing. And you can have it to sound really like a studio grade lexicon, clean, but still some modulation to like really crazy reverbs and soundscapes that last forever. And then the reverb pedal is becoming more like an, an instrument than just a reverb pedal. And I think that this pedal, it inspires you to make or to sound different. Um, but at the same time, the build quality and the sound is just so beautiful done. So to me, the only reverb pedal that comes maybe close is the new neighbor Illumin. Uh, there are a few algorithms that sounds just amazing on that one. But here, everyone sounds good. To me, this is the best reverb pedal out there. I guess, and I know many of you would have different opinions, so please comment below. It's just a matter of taste, but I think this is going to be really hard to beat. I have a few cons though. In mono, you can use this with relay or true bypass. Uh, I always build my pedal boards with true bypass because when it's a buffer or something, I can always hear the difference. Like with this one in stereo, it's buffered bypass. And I hear a small difference in sound, but in a live setting, it's gonna be really hard. But just sitting here playing the guitar straight into it, I can hear a little difference from the true bypass to the buffered bypass. When you look at the display, you can see here that the fonts here are really small. It could be a little bit hard to read and it's still space here. So I just wonder if there would be a possibility to make that a bit larger because it's pretty small. So if you want to bank up, you hit those and you have to hit them again to actually bank up. So to me, I don't see the point of hitting them without banking up. And there are rumors that it will be a desktop editor and that would be just amazing.
please leave a comment if you liked this video. If you have any questions, views, comments, I will try to answer them, everyone. And if you subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it a lot. And thank you so much for watching.